I'm hurrying! I'm hurrying! I'm cooking as fast as I can! No matter how much I feed him, he's still hungry! Meatloaf! I need to make another meatloaf! Six! Six meatloafs! And french fries! Shoestring's not the fifth cut! Admit it, you thought that was me inside being fed. <sighs> I wish it was. My position in life has been usurped. That's a fancy word meaning purloined, stolen. And you know who stole it? This guy. Eddie Gourmand, the famous restaurant critic. You remember him? He was on six episodes last season. You see, he lost his TV show and, well, I'll start at the top. It started with one of my favorite TV shows. At Botticelli's Italian Bistro, they have a whole new way of making lasagna. Lasagna didn't need any improvement. It was perfect the way it was. They also have a lovely rigatoni bolognese. Oh, and the cannelloni stuffed with mozzarella. An hour of fattening foods every night. Who wouldn't consider this a must-see television? Amazingly, the guy who ran a TV station. This food is just a die from. It sure is. All those calories, all that cholesterol. Right after the show, Eddie got the bad news. But why? Mr. Station Manager, sir, why? Because people shouldn't be eating the kind of fattening meals you encourage. They should be eating what I eat. Vegan chicken made out of soybeans, brown rice, organic sprouts with a wheat germ shake mixed with goat's milk yogurt. Uh, if I could just ask one tiny question. Is any of this food? <laughs> of course it's food! It's good food! Healthy food! The kind of food that makes your body say, thank you for taking such good care of me! Well, I, I suppose if you melted some cheese over it and deep fried it. Gorman! Do you know what people wind up looking like when they eat the food you recommend? No, what? This! And so Eddie Gourmand was replaced. The program normally seen in this time slot, Simply Fabulous Dining with Eddie Gourmand, will never be seen again. So we can bring you this new, much better for you program. Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the benefits of eating tofu. Oh, there are none. And so, he was fired. The guy took it hard. This went on for days and days. Here you go, Mr. Gourmand. One nice hot Vito's special, just for you. Oh, thank you, Vito. <laughs> that was the most delicious pizza I ever ate. Oh, hey, then uh, maybe you mention a Vito's Pizzeria on your show sometime? <laughs> Finally, Eddie wound up where all people who can't control their emotions wind up. Sitting behind me in a movie. After ruining the film and getting tears in my popcorn, he apologized. Oh, I've been like this since I lost my show, Mr. Arbuckle. <laughs> Feeling sorry for the guy, Pup? <laughs> yeah, me too. I just hope John doesn't do something foolish like invite him over for dinner. Eddie, why don't you come over tonight and have dinner with us? <laughs> ah! oh, that would be too, too wonderful, Mr. Arbuckle. Great! I'll even make my special recipe for meatloaf. Hey, doesn't that poor guy have enough problems? That evening, John learned why you should never invite a food critic to your house. Everything looks positively scrumptious, Mr. Arbuckle. Oh, this meatloaf looks good enough to eat. I'll have some of this, and some of this, and some of this, and all of this, and then I'll have this, oh, this. Oh, this is utterly divine! Uh, 
Bodie, are you getting any food? <laughs> Me neither. Let's go. Another good reason never to invite a food critic to dinner. They tend to rate what they eat. Mm, I'd give the meatloaf two stars. The mashed potatoes need more butter, so they get one mm. star. But four stars for the gravy! Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the gravy. It could have used more flour, but otherwise it was... <laughs> Who threw that banana peel on the walk? <laughs> Mr. Gourmand, are you all right? No, get, get me a doctor. I'll call a doctor. And some shrimp chow mein. I'll call a Chinese restaurant. And a large mushroom pizza with pepperoni on half. I'll call Vito. <laughs> Amazingly, the doctor arrived before the shrimp chow mein or the pizza. Better keep him here until his foot heals. How long do you think that will be, doctor? Oh, not more than a few months. Goodbye. A few months? Oh, Mr. Gromond, wouldn't you be more comfortable at home or in a nice hospital? You take care of me, Mr. Arbuckle, or I'll sue you for everything you own. Except the cat. <laughs> now. Get me a grilled cheese sandwich. One grilled cheese sandwich coming up. With potato chips, the ripple cut kind. Ripple cut potato chips, right. And I want a pickle with that. Uh, that's how it started. Then it got worse. Uh, hello? Hi, Michael. It's two minutes past five in the AM, and I am looking for my breakfast. I must have syrup. 18 kinds if you have them. If not, go out and buy them. Oh, and I'd like eggs. Fried, boiled, scrambled, and painted with lovely designs for Easter. There was no food for me? In short, Eddie had started to remind me of that greedy, impatient, lazy creature. Oh, let's see, what's it called? Oh, right. <laughs> me. Uh-huh. Yeah. <gasps> to make a healthy chocolate cake, use no chocolate. Instead, we'll use organic yeast spores and granola. Turn it off. Turn it off. Huh? Sorry, Mr. Gourmand. I guess it upsets you to see the show that replaced yours. That, but mainly the sight of all that disgusting healthy food. I can't uh, healthy food. It's the cat so has an idea. <gasps> Great show today, sir. After the latest ratings are in. What? I only got a three rating? Well, you only had three viewers. As much as I might hate it, I've got to get Eddie Gorman back. Arbuckle! Arbuckle, I want my dinner! Arbuckle, bring me my dinner or I'll sue you! Sorry, Mr. Gourmand. Here you go. Yeah, what is this? It's an artificial chicken patty made without chicken, but with artichoke flour and modified wheatgrass. When I asked for dinner, I should have specified food. This is food. It's all part of our new healthy living program. Let's go, boys. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You can tell how desperate I am to get rid of Eddie. I'm actually doing this. Eddie, we're going to start you with a hundred sit-ups. You'll do nothing of the sort. And if you're not going to get my dinner, I'm going to get it for myself. I need a bacon cheeseburger with extra bacon, extra cheese, and extra burger. <gasps> there's no food. Wait, there's one thing to eat in here. I'm saved. It's, it's... <laughs> Ready for the 50 mile hike? No, no, I, I can't survive in this house any longer! Yeah, I just found the house. He left the address in his voicemail in case anyone wanted to forward any burritos. Yeah, I've got to get him to come back. <laughs> Mr. Station Manager, sir! 
Eddie, I want you to come back to your old job. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Does that mean you won't come back to the station? Oh, no, no, no. I'll be back on the air tomorrow. It's just that right this minute I have an emergency need for a buffet. Garfield, your idea was brilliant. Ideas are always brilliant when I'm the guy who has them. Let's go celebrate. I'm going to make every one of your favorite <laughs> foods, Garfield. <laughs> Mr. Orbuckle. I'm sorry he caused so much trouble for you. Oh, that's fine. <coughs> hey, Mr. Station Manager, sir. Don't do it. Would you like to join us for dinner? He did yeah. it. Thanks, but I don't eat this kind of stuff. You know how many calories are in those steaks and the fat grams and... I mean, uh, well, it smells tempting, but... Oh, maybe one bite wouldn't hurt. <laughs> oh. oh, you know what cholesterol could do to you? And carbonated drinks? I only drink... Mm. Hey, this is good. Harbuckle. Get me some honey! Right away. Oh, oh and I'm gonna wanna try the french fries. So, uh, some ketchup. Also right away. And I don't see uh -huh. any steak sauce! Steak sauce, I'll get it. Deja vu all over again. Uh -huh. Looks like we're not getting anything to eat for the next few days. Uh -huh. <laughs> and blitzes! I want blitzes the way my mother used to make them! Uh, I'll get your mother. <laughs> and do we have any chocolate cream pie for dessert? There you are. I just wanted to tell you I'm going to the market. Oh, great. Uh, bring me back one of everything, large economy size. <laughs> See you in a bit. Okay. Ah! Oh, make sure you keep an eye out for... <laughs> That's silly. I was going to tell you to watch for mice. <gasps> Who's not hiding? But we haven't had a mouse in this house for months. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Hey, you're the owner of this, uh, this house? I think so. My cat might disagree. Well, I'm Pulver of Pulver Extermination. We have reports of mice in this neighborhood. Oh, not in my home. <laughs> well, I doubt that. But if you do see any mice, give us a call. We're fast and we're ruthless. Well, I'll take your card, but I won't need it. Not with Garfield on the job. I could swear I'm hearing the kind of music mice like to dance to. Hey, Squeak, another one of your relatives just arrived. Hey, family is family. Okay with you, Garf? Well, as long as they don't touch my food or interrupt my sleep, they're welcome. Great. Who is it? My Uncle Howard? My nephew Morris? It's your cousin Max. My cousin Max? What, something wrong with cousin Max? Oh, my cousin Max is bad news, and he hates cats. Ah, oh, come on, you're funning me. Nobody hates cats. Squeak! What are you doing with that... that... cat? Huh? Don't worry, cousin. I'll protect you from him. I mean martial arts. hi hey hey <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. We may finally have a character on this show more annoying than normal. I don't have to be protected from Garfield. He's my buddy. Whoa, your buddy? Are you out of your mouse mind? He's a cat. You know what cats do to mice. <laughs> yeah, they do a mean salsa dance with them. No, they eat them with salsa. 
You've got a lot to learn, Squeak. Well, what should I do now, eat or sleep? <sighs> sleep. I'm telling you, Max, Garfield's not like other cats. He doesn't eat mice. Oh, well then, what does he eat? Uh, everything else. I can see you need a serious lesson, cousin. Come on. There's gotta be a player somewhere around here. Hey, watch this, cousin. You're about to learn a valuable lesson. Cats, what are they good for? They lie around all day, sleeping and clawing the drapes. So far, no argument. And generally doing nothing. And then there's the most horrifying thing they do. Cats eat mice. Argument. And they do it in the cruelest way possible. A cat catches a mouse. Does he just eat it and get it over with? No. He has to play with his food, draw out the agony. So he lets the mouse go, then he catches it again. And he lets the mouse go, then he catches it again. Now turn it off! Turn it off! It's for your own good, cuz. And then, when the mouse thinks he's gotten away, thinks his life has been spared, the cat strikes. No! No! Turn it off! Turn it off! I wouldn't do something like that! It wouldn't! He's a cat! Cats eat mice! Are you gonna let this happen? Are you gonna do nothing? Well, this cat sharpens his claws and his teeth. <laughs> I've seen what he can do to a 10-pound standing rib roast. Imagine what he could do to one of us. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not going to stand around and become rodent-flavored cat food. Uh-uh. Oh, uh -uh, me neither. Oh, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. This is Are you moving or am I? I think it's me. <laughs> hey guys, you want to explain this? No! Uh, apparently not. Okay, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm not letting a bunch of rodents throw me out of my own home. Hey, if you think you're getting me out of this house... Uh, you're making a very accurate prediction. You're not getting us, Cat! Come near us again, and you'll be sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's you'll it. You tell, you tell him, you tell him. I gotta do something about this, but not now. <sighs> I'm gonna take this bus into town and go to Vito's. I'm on my break, Cat. Can you wait for five minutes? Considering pizza's involved, no. But I guess I have to. I'm telling you, unless you're a lasagna or rather fattening food, Garfield is harmless. He's a cat, and cats are not harmless. Relax, Squeak. With him gone, we have nothing to worry about. <laughs> mice! My house is full of mice! <laughs> nothing to worry about, huh? Hey, everyone, hide! Garfield! Garfield! Oh, he's no use. How am I going to get rid of these... Garfield would have protected us. Cats don't protect mice. Besides, what can that guy do to us with no cat around? Mr. Palmer, how soon can you be here? Ooh. Yeah, that'll be fast enough. about, because there's no cat around, huh? Relax. I can handle this guy. Hey, you get out of here. Oh, I'll have to get rough with this. One of Odie's toys. Maybe... Garfield, Garfield, where are you? 
I hope at least he's reading the comic pages. Garfield, you gotta help us. There's this guy, this exterminator. He's got all my friends. Your friends threw me out of my own house. I know, I know. They didn't mean it. Well, they did mean it, but they were scared and... Relax, relax. While I was waiting for the bus, I figured out how I was gonna get back inside. You got that for Halloween last year, didn't you? Yeah, but it didn't work so well. I didn't get any candy, I just got a lot of cheese. Okay, now you wait here. <laughs> that big meanie doesn't stand a chance. I think I've got them all now, and... Yahoo! Is the vacuum on your back as big as the one on your head? <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> I'm gonna need another canister to hold him. Yahoo! And for him, <laughs> I'm gonna need my machine to be on max power. Ladies and gentlemen, a brief chase scene. Run! <laughs> Run like the rat you are! <laughs> There's no way to hide, Mouse. Hey, pal, you missed one. What's that? One I missed. I'll capture him, then I'll get you. Hmm. Guess that cat changed his mind. It's that toy mouse again. And what's this cable attached to it? Stop! Stop! I can't unstrap this device! Help! Stop! <laughs> You saved us! Guess we were wrong about you! Yeah, we sure were. Hey, uh, Garfield, I'm not really good at saying I'm sorry. Oh, you just need to practice. You gotta say it more often. <laughs> hey, uh, we were thinking, since you're already dressed for it, we'd like to make you an honorary mouse. <laughs> oh, well... Just so long as I don't have to eat any really stinky cheese. I don't know where that exterminator went, but he did a great job. <sighs> I'll bet there isn't a mouse within miles of here. <laughs> I'll be back in a while. <laughs> Anything I need to get at the market? <laughs> A list of everything. Okay. Do you think we'll ever see that exterminator guy again? Probably not. I made a mistake. That wasn't the bus to Vito's Pizza. It wasn't? Well, where was it going? Well, let's just put it this way. Down there, they dance like this. Now, Garfield, I know you're not going to like this, but Liz insists you have to lose 10 pounds. So we're putting you on a diet of carrot sticks and lettuce. 
<clears throat> now, before you say anything or throw a fit because it isn't pasta, please understand. We're doing this for your own good. <laughs> You understand? You're not going to put up a fight or steal the refrigerator or anything? Oh, <laughs> this is great! Let me get you some low-calorie salad dressing. Perfect. He'll be here in nine seconds. Garfield! I'm so impressed with how well you're taking this. I guess I owe you an apology. Keep eating like that, Garfield, and you'll lose that 10 pounds in no time. Uh, you need a napkin? I'll go get one. Just in time. The Chinese restaurant will be delivering in 11 seconds. <laughs> no, he hasn't lost any weight since his last visit. In fact, he's gained three more pounds. Uh, that's not possible. I've had him on a strict diet. John, for his own good, you have to stop him from eating so much. I can't watch him every minute. I have work to do. <laughs> well, I may have just the solution. <laughs> an inventor with an overweight pussycat invented this. He calls it the motorized meow monitor. Motorized meow monitor? Uh, how does it work? I'll show you. This collar locks on. I'll give you a key so you can remove it after Garfield has lost 10 pounds. It contains a tracking device. Wherever Garfield goes, the robot will follow, train its camera on him, and send a signal back to you. Ah! Oh, this is amazing, Liz. I can sit at my own computer at home and keep an eye on Garfield, no matter where he goes and what he eats. You can borrow it, and I'll give you an extra collar just in case. This is not fair. It's an invasion of privacy. It's, it's spying. Get me an attorney. Get me an attorney named Murray. You have no right to... Huh? What's that you have in your hand there, Garfield? What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, wanna lick? <laughs> Going out, Garfield? Well, remember, you're still on that diet. You're not to eat anything. Not a crumb will cross these lips. Okay, so I'm lying. It's okay to lie if it's an emergency. And me not being able to eat between meals, if that's not an emergency, I don't know what is. <gasps> Vito Savory Pizza. I haven't tasted it for, oh, it must be a good six hours. But I will need a disguise. <laughs> I'll have the outfit back in five minutes or ten slices, whichever occurs first. Mamma mia! It is the Garfield Orange Alert! Everyone, go take the pizzas! <laughs> Garfield? Where is that handsome cat? Oh, where? <laughs> Oh, there he is. Garfield, if you don't want I should call John, you're gonna promise me that you won't swipe any pizzas. On my honor as the star of a popular cartoon show, I promise. Excellent. You pasta pirate pussycat. You I didn't say anything about lasagna. You mozzarella mooching a man is. He only got eight of them. Oh, uh, only eight? That's not so bad. Last week, he got 17 and... A gallon of spumoni. Ah, the perfect place to dine on nature's most perfect food. Ah. Garfield, I'm disappointed. So am I. I could only get eight. You're supposed to stay on your diet. If you eat those lasagnas... All right, all right. I don't need to hear the cheap threat. I know it'll be cheap, and I know it's a threat. What are you doing? <laughs> My lasagna! <laughs> what is wrong with it? Suddenly Vito's lasagna, it is not good enough for you. <laughs> what are you doing? <gasps> I am in such trouble. Hey, it's just one cat who won't eat it. 
But that cat, he's eat everything. If he won't eat it, nobody will eat it. I have to change the recipe. There are donuts in the world, and pulled pork sandwiches, and fried shrimp the size of whales. But if John sees me eating any of it, ah, I just have to make sure he doesn't see me eating. <laughs> That's my exercise for the year, and maybe next year, too. But it worked. I don't see that motorized meow monitor anywhere. Huh? One of everything. No, uh, make it two. Imagine John thinking a bucket of bolts could... Uh, keep those on ice for me. Garfield! I'll eat this in here where he can't see me. Phew! Even if that robot followed me in here, he couldn't shoot video to send back to John. It's too dark. <laughs> No use. I'll never escape that robot. Huh? Well, at least this came off. Without it on, the motorized meow monitor won't be able to track me. Hmm. Wait a minute. John got an extra one. If I throw this one away, he'll just put the other one on me. There's got to be a way to get him to give this machine up. <gasps> and I think I know what it is. It's working out great, Liz. I can sit here at home, keep an eye on Garfield, and make sure he doesn't eat between meals. It's for his own good, but I'll bet he's not a happy cat. Not happy at all. It looks like he's wandered down to the waterfront. Oh, Agony. Oh, despair. Oh, despair and agony. Oh, did I mention woe? Oh, despair, agony, and woe. Hours without lasagna. Days without pork chow mein and crispy noodles. How could John do this to me? <laughs> no. <laughs> he looks pretty upset that I'm denying him his favorite foods. You know, Garfield, that's just an act to get your sympathy. This doesn't look like an act. What's he doing now? <gasps> he's, he's heading out onto the pier. There's an ocean liner there. A big one. Liz, it looks like he's taking a last look around. Like he's leaving. Don't fall for it, John. Liz, he's getting on the boat. Liz, he's on the ship. Garfield is leaving. He's going to some other country. I've got to stop him. John? John! Ooh, I better get off before she sails. <laughs> John should be here in about 15 minutes. 10 if he makes all the lights. <laughs> I gotta be in time. I've just gotta be. What do you mean it's already sailed? My cat's on board. Get it back. Sorry, that ship's on its way to Tokyo. Tokyo? Well, he always did like salmon teriyaki. <sighs> oh, he really did it, Liz. Garfield's gone to Tokyo. I'll probably never see him again. I can't tell you how much I'm going to miss him. Sure you can. Just try. John, I'm really sorry how all this worked out. If you'd like to cancel our dinner tonight... No, no, I need to get my mind off my little fat furry friend. You know, I'd give anything to see him again. I wouldn't make him diet. I'd get him whatever he wanted. How about donuts from Dave's drive through Donut Diner? You want donuts, Garfield? Sure. Oh. You know, Liz, if he'd just come back from Tokyo, I'd... <laughs> Garfield! You didn't go to Tokyo scaring me like that. You know what I ought to do? I ought to... <sighs> get you those donuts. <laughs> And on the way home, we could stop at Vito's for pizza and at Irv's Taco Emporium. Oh. You seem to have enough food to tide you over while I take Liz to dinner. I'll be back around 10. <laughs> okay, see you later. Bye. 
Ah! Hello, pup. Hey, come on. We're gonna watch my favorite new show. I tried to get him to lose weight, Liz. Honest, I did. It's just that he's Garfield. I know. Could I have some more water, John? Sure. Let me pour it for you. I. Oops. Let me mop that up. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry again. Did you see where my pork chop went? <laughs> 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 oh, well, that's better than last time when I spilled the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love watching John on a date. Where else are you going to find comedy like that? <sighs> hey, you hungry, Odie? <laughs> well, then, you better go get some food. <laughs> <laughs> Mention dinner on the table. I'll be right in with the lasagna, guys. Be careful, it's very hot. I don't care if it's hot, just as long as it's here. <coughs> Yuck is putting it mildly. <clears throat> Instead of this, could we, like, uh, have some food, please? I'm sorry you don't like it. It's Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. I didn't have time to make fresh. Can you live with it? <laughs> all right, all right. Get in the car. We'll go to Vito's. Mm. Vito, you're the master. <laughs> and I tell you, this is a lot better than Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. So is appendicitis. Oh, I thank you. But the true master was a man who taught me how to cook. The great Giuseppe Squisito. He made the best lasagna in the world. He was your teacher? He was my teacher, my mentor, my hero. The greatest Italian chef who ever molded a meatball. We were so fortunate, those of us who got to train under him. You call yourself a chef. I should make you all and turn in your soil to aprons. Tell me, what are the two most important ingredients in anything you cook? Your heart and your soul. I can hear you. Your heart and your soul. Until you learn that, you will never be worthy of the honor of being called a chef. If only I could hear him call me that. Well, invite him. I'm sure he... Oh, no, 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 no. He retired. He disappeared long before I opened the Vitos here. No one knows where he is, or even if he is still among us. Hmm. Quiet, Ori. Many a night, I dream of him seeing it, tasting my marinara and saying, Vito, you are a chef. Ah, but it will never happen. Hey, let me get you some of Vito's world-famous thick crust pizza, eh? <laughs> Vito's a good guy. I hope someday he sees that chef Squisito again. <laughs> Best lasagna in the world. The 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 best lasagna in the world. <laughs> I've got to have it. 
I've got to have it. I've got to have the best lasagna in the world. Squeak, wake up. Wake up, Squeak. You woke me up, right? In the middle of a keys dream. Squeak, I need your help. Oh, it was about cheddar. That's my favorite. Squeak, I need you to alert the mouse network. I have to find a chef named Giuseppe Squizito. Uh, can't it wait till morning? Sure. <laughs> All right, it's morning. Find him. He's the man who makes... The best lasagna in the world. Garfield, lunch is on the table. How do you expect me to eat this when the best lasagna in the world is out there, just somewhere waiting to be eaten? <laughs> hey, I have to keep my strength up. Garfield, Garfield, my friend Irv here found him. Tell him, Irv. You're uh, looking for Chef Giuseppe Squizito? Desperately. Well, I moved. I now live in a cheese factory. Lucky guy. And Chef Squizito, he comes in all the time to buy mozzarella, ricotta, and parmesan. <gasps> the three basic ingredients in the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Take me to him. Take me to him right now. Can we walk faster? He lives in a shack out this way. Why are we going all the way out here, Garfield? Because I must have the best lasagna in the world. That's it. He lives there. Thanks. OK, you guys can go home. I'm going to go eat the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Kitty cat, what do you want? Ah, 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 ah. Do you want the lasagna? Meow. The best lasagna in the world? <laughs> No. So you think Garfield will get lasagna? Garfield always gets lasagna. Ugh. Yeah, I know I look stupid, but there's nothing I won't do for the best lasagna in the world. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Down here, Tiny. A little bambino left on my doorstep. Are you hungry, a little baby? Yeah. Yeah, hungry. Then I get you the most delicious food any baby would want to eat. Here we come. The best. Baby food made out of turnips and oatmeal. <laughs> Do not cry, little bambino. Squizito will find you something you will like. <laughs> Hey, don't laugh. You used to sound just like this. <laughs> Here, a little one. You will like this. Hmm, this is not working out. I need to find some paper. What am I going to do? I cannot keep a baby around here, even a homely, fuzzy one. How can I find it's a mother? <laughs> a note? I did not notice a note there before. If you find this baby, please feed it the best lasagna in the world, his mother. No, I do not think a lasagna is a healthy food for little babies. Then return him to 150 West Central Avenue. 
Come, my little bambino. I take you back to your mother. Are you sure you don't want to grab a quick bite before we do this? This is 150 West Central Avenue. Vito's Pizzeria? You live here, a little baby? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Chef Esquisito! Oh, oh, Chef Esquisito, it is you! Do you not remember me? Vito Capelletti, I was one of your students. Vito Capelletti, one of my worst students. You were the one who tried putting spaghetti on a barbecue. <sighs> Yes, but uh, I learned. I learned from you. And, and now I have my own restaurant. Uh, please, uh, taste my tagliatelle. Uh, sample my spumoni. I would not soil my taste buds with your cooking. <sighs> but I am a good cook now. For... You could not possibly be a... Um... Hey, that's not a bad meatball. You... You like it? In fact, it is a very good meatball. Tell me, how is your cannelloni? My cannelloni? It is, uh, it's, uh... It is, uh, under the way. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have here a nice cannelloni for you. Ah, I want you to try my fettuccine Alfredo. Oh, and you must try my chicken marsala and my garlic bread. Vito, you truly are a chef. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, grazie, maestro. Uh, thank you. And you, Pussigato, I am in your debt for making this happen. How can I show my appreciation? <gasps> Garfield, I don't know how you did it. You actually got Chef Squisito to come here and uh -huh. prepare his world-famous lasagna for us. I have not cooked in many years, not since I retired. I sold my recipe to a company that markets it as... Ah, it is ready. Woohoo! Ah! Wow! Here you are! Joe's a frozen microwave uh, lasagna. Uh, uh, Chef Squisito. I don't know how to tell you this, but we tried Joe's frozen microwave lasagna, and it was... terrible. <clears throat> terrible? But it is so tasty and so easy to make. You just peel off the plastic film and microwave it. Plastic film? Uh... Hey, if you take the plastic film off before you cook it, mm. This is the best lasagna in the world. Huh. Mm. Mm. Um. Work. I'm only a few days behind in my payments. I'm just waiting for a check from my employer. And my employer is waiting for a check from you, Arbuckle. Don't make me sue you. Oh, John's laid on a bill for something or other. That guy came by to demand payment. You'd really sue me? Over such a small amount of money? I'm a lawyer, Arbuckle. It's my job to sue people. Listen to my schedule for this afternoon. One o'clock, sue someone. Two o'clock, Sue someone. Three o'clock, go visit my cousin Sue. Three thirty, Sue Sue. Four o'clock, stop at the market, buy a gallon of milk. 
4.30, Sue the market, the dairy, and the cow the milk came from. Any questions? Nope. Tell me, Arbuckle, how is it you're always low on cash? Here you are, Mr. Arbuckle. Twelve pepperoni pizzas for your pussycat. <sighs> Any questions? This is a baby kangaroo. Not as cute as me. And this is a baby panda. Definitely not as cute as me. <laughs> hey, what are you complaining about? I gave you a crust. Not as cute as me. <laughs> not as cute as me. All right, a half a crust. <laughs> Guys, I need to make some fast money. I'm going to have a garage sale. I need things to sell. <laughs> Garfield, look around. Find things that we want to get rid of. Things that are utterly and totally useless. <laughs> I love watching nature films on TV. <laughs> Dawes, after we drop my son at home, take me to the courthouse. Very well, Mr. Allberg. Who are you suing today? I don't know, but I'll find someone. Dad, could we maybe do something? I mean, you and me? I have work to do, Jack. Besides, I just picked you up at your baseball game. Yeah, and you sued the umpire. Oh, there's that Arbuckle fellow I may be suing. He seems to be having some sort of yard sale. Dawes, stop for a moment or I'll sue you. Let me sell Nermal. Oh, let me sell Nermal, please. Maybe I can get three dollars for this old lamp. Why won't you let me sell Nermal? Garfield, while I go look for more junk, put price tags on everything. And remember, price things based on what they're really worth. There you go, Odie. What you're really worth. <laughs> Two cents. A lot of worthless junk. I may have to sue him over this. Hey, Dad, look at the neat puppy. He's real cute, and he's only two cents. You want him, son? Maybe I can negotiate the price down to a penny. <laughs> Please, Dad. Oh, all right. Arbuckle, I'm buying this dog. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. Odie's not for sale. Yes, he is. He has a price tag, and I have agreed to pay the price specified on the tag. That's a legally binding contract. Honor it, or I'll sue you. I owe you two cents. Do you have change for a hundred? <laughs> oh, and I'll need a receipt. Oh. Look, I know he had a price tag on him, but it was just a joke. A joke? Sorry, Arbuckle. I know you're attached to this dog, but my son wants it, and I always give my son anything he wants. Yeah, as long as it doesn't take any of your time. <laughs> Field. Have you thought of anything, anything you can do to make this situation better? Uh, I marked Nermal down to a penny. Uh, Too bad about Odie. I always liked him. He was a little damp around the tongue, but he was a good dog. Hey, Squeak, you gonna finish that piece of cheese? I was planning. Why? Because John's not gonna feed me until I figure out how to get Odie back. Squeak, do you think you and the Mouse Network could figure out where they took the pooch? Leave it to me, Goff. I'd do anything for you. Anything? <laughs> Make that almost anything. Forty-seven Barrister Lane. That's in the fancy part of town. No oh, figures. I got it from an upper-class rodent. So how do you figure to get the guy to give Odie back? I shall employ a brilliant plan. I hope I have one by the time I get there. No. <laughs> Hi, boy. Huh? 
gotta throw the stick and you fetch it. Uh -uh. Wanna go for a run? <sighs> uh -uh. <sighs> Whoa, nice place Odie gets to live in. If you're wondering, I still don't have that brilliant plan. Oh, it's you. Hmm. Did you come to try to get the dog back? <laughs> well, Mr. Allwork gave explicit instructions. The dog now belongs to his son, Jack, and that's final. <gasps> hmm. <laughs> no, you're not a little girl come to play with Master Jack. You are that pussycat again. Good day. Hey, uh, Mr. Butler, sir. It's me, Avito, here to deliver a pizza to the little boy uh, and the uh, papala with the wet tongue. No, you're not a pizza delivery man. You're still that pussycat. Good day. No, you are not the abominable snowman. Eh, it was worth a try. You're that pussycat again. And you forced me to use our state-of-the-art security system, which fortunately includes an abominable snowman catapult. <laughs> John needs to get one of those. You never know when an abominable snowman is going to come around. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get Odie back. I don't even know where I got those costumes. Huh? Hey, he left that upstairs window open. Okay, it's not a brilliant plan, but it's close. You don't want to do anything with me, do you, puppy? Uh -uh. I didn't need a dog for that. I could get that from my dad. Huh? You miss where he used to live, don't you? Well, that's where you should be. Come on, I'll take you home. Well, it appears that pussycat had the good sense to give up and leave. Now to find Odie. Oh, no, he did not. He's climbing into the master bedroom. Now to run from the butler. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to sue you, and that's that. Fine. See you for dinner Sunday night, Mom. <laughs> What does this mean? I don't know, but I'll bet I get sued. <sighs> I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Allwork. This pussycat breached security, and now I see that young Jack is missing. Also, the dog you bought him. Missing? Well, it's obvious where they are. Get the car outdoors. And you, cat, they're coming with me. Oh, nothing's going right. Even with the garage sale, I still don't have enough money to pay off that bill. Garfield's gone, and I may have lost Odie forever. Maybe not forever. Uh, Odie, you're back! <laughs> I'm never going to let you get away from me again. You'll have to. They don't let you have dogs in prison. Mr. Olwork! I bought that dog fair and square. Dad! Not now, Jack. You stole him back, and I'm calling the police and having you charged with grand theft puppy. But, Dad! Quiet, Jack. Don't make me sue my own son. I'll do it if I have to. Hey, let the kid get a word in edgewise. Dad, I gave the dog back to him. Why? I thought you wanted that dog. What is it you really want? Why won't he answer me? What is it he really wants? Whatever it is, I, I can afford it. A dog is great, but he's no substitute for a parent. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right. Mr. Olwork, you asked me to remind you those people you needed to sue? They can wait, Dawes. I need to spend more time with my son. What's it gonna be, son? Ball game? Movie? Anything!
Arbuckle, uh, that bill you owe, uh, don't worry, we'll work out something. And thanks. Thank you. Well, I still have to figure out a way to make some money. <laughs> I know, I know. You're going to suggest selling normal. Huh? No? Oh, I'm sorry, Garfield. Well, what is your idea? <laughs> what? We'll give him away, then charge people to take him back. We'll make millions. Millions, I tell you. Millions! <laughs> <laughs>